and then, oh, we are live. Welcome, guys, hey, to episode 21 of The Weekly. And uh, with me this week is, uh, oh, well, well, Sam's in here now. How's it going, Sam? Sam will say hello once his audio kicks in. But to the meantime, <laughs> the man in red, Mr. Juan Bagnell. How's it going, man? Hey, going pretty well. I, it's, it's, it's a little unnerving just how stoic Sam's being. He's just like... And he's like, bam, I'm here, but I'm not going to say anything because I'm yeah. Sam. And look at the face, man. He's like, <sighs> I'm, I'm intense. Batman. I'm intense. I'm Batman. I'm Sam. That's the voice he's going to use when he kicks in. I hope then. so. I hope we can get Sam to give us a good, like, swear to me, like, full-on <laughs> Richard Nixon jowls. I think that'd be great. I don't think he can hear I don't even think he can hear us. That's the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it so much more fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's us kick it off uh, this week. Uh, just a couple of notes. Um, definitely check out uh, Adam um, Gaud's uh, podcast. I was going to say blog. My bad. <laughs> His podcast is bi-weekly. Uh, the link is in the description. So definitely check that out. If I haven't, if it's not there, I will add it again. Uh, for some reason, anytime I keep seeking save on those uh, presets, it doesn't want to. Never mind. But I'll add it for you guys so you guys can check it out. Pretty cool. And also, we have a giveaway. You can win a five, I was going to say 45, sorry, 55 inch 4K HD TV courtesy Ooh. of TCL to help you cut the cord because cut the cord day was yesterday. We run the giveaway for about a week. We'll have the link for you guys in the description as well. Uh, it's a 55 inch TV, plus, you get a wine guard hd tv antenna because the tv has a built-in tuner so you can get on the air stations and it's also got built-in roku so you're covered I mean, right on so definitely check that out all right now we are in for the news of the day there are a couple of things that will probably amount to uselessnesses besides yeah, there the are quite a few one. things this week but uh, i i felt i i agreed with your pick of the top uselessness of this week yeah this one is very troubling because it has to do with politics and and you guys know i don't like to get into politics in the show i always you know if it affects tech we talk about that quite a bit and this affects tech and also this affects how business is done when it comes to tech companies so at t is was going to buy time warner we knew that a bunch of us don't like the merger, but you know what? It should run its due course and go through the pr proper procedures. And if it passes, so be it. We'll all complain. We'll voice <laughs> our grievances. But there's a process to things. And this week, um, uh, the White House basically sent out a memo stating that, you know, basically wanting CNN to not be as harsh as they are to the White House or else they might see some, you know, something go wrong with their... Um, <laughs> I mean, it's like legit America. mafioso, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> hey, be a shame if uh, something just accidentally happened to torpedo this merger you're working on. I, you know, it'd just be nice if you could only say nice things about me in public because, you know, accidents happen. So, uh, so that'd be a shame. It'd be a real shame if that happened to your... Your beautiful little merger there. I, I just, uh, it'd be nice. You should, you know, just, you know, like maybe play it safe, you know, yeah. back mm -hmm. off. That'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. So that happened this week. Um, Sam, can you hear us? Uh, no I, audio. No audio. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Once Sam. you kick in, you got to give me the Batman voice, man. When you fix it, if you don't come with a Batman voice, I'm going to mute you. So you got to come in and swear to me yeah, or else the merger will work. <laughs> uh, so so for, for Kashif Raja, I'll start working on my Bane impersonation. Right now, I just sound like a, a dandy butler. I don't really sound like Bane. So. Bane, is, oh. Bane is hard. It's like, to you, the oh. people. Oh. Well, and it's the cadence. Oh. It almost feels like I need like a twirly little mustache and a monocle to pull it off. So yeah. I'll, I'll keep working on that. But, but going back to to the uselessness of the White House trying to look, I mean, just basically doing or at least stating something that is illegal, you know, that tampers with the way the free market economy is and how we do things, you know, in the U.S. where, yeah. hey, look, whether we like the merger or not, like I'm one of those who said, look, I don't like the idea of doing this because it's just going to yeah. it's going to build an arms race where people like Disney might feel like they need to buy a T-Mobile or a Sprint or something, you know, like everyone's going to start looking for their own armaments. But well, and, and it, it is very troubling when we see companies that own the pipes 
to content, also having a vested interest in the content which is produced to go over those pipes. Mm -hmm. So there are definitely some concerns, but this is also why we need a regulatory agency. I don't know, like maybe some kind of federal communications uh, something that can get in there and make sure that these deals are managed appropriately. Um, that, that's the that. process. It's, it's that's how the this FCC. works. Isn't that what it's called, the FCC? Oh, you know what? That's a great name for it. If, if we ever do make a regulatory agency like that, I think we should call it the FCC. I, I, I like that, that, that acronym. So well done there. Yeah. yeah I'm glad I can help. <laughs> but, but this is what's so frustrating is that we've got an FCC that's all about trying to tear down these regulations, deregulating the industry, letting businesses do whatever they want. At the same time as we have a presidential administration that's hellbent on this war with CNN because it's really distracting from other terrible policy that's being thrown around right now. So they're not even consistent on that message. You know, Ajit Pai is, is trying to strike down every type of business oriented regulation that could stand in the way of corporations doing what they want. But you now Donald Trump has a grudge. So the president is looking to upset the apple cart on a merger that was already kind of on the tracks on, you know, that was already trying uh, already in progress. So this, this is, it's just hypocrisy to head spinning. It, it, it's so difficult to kind of arrive at this point and be able to sum up what's happened because none of it's rational. It's all knee jerk reactionary and whatever can kind of make for popular entertainment because that's what people will talk about as opposed to talking about net neutrality or opposed to talking about healthcare reform or opposed to talking about you know the the tax plan that GOP is trying to push forward and this is uh, this is just sort of another example of why we need grown-ups in these offices to tackle these types of uh, these types of situations mm -hmm. hey Warren how's it going all right how's it going guys hey yeah. what's up bud cool. so we're talking about uh, first topic um, White House, you know, possibly meddling in uh, that AT and T and T Mobile merger. Ignore. I, like like <laughs> you, you say so much nonsense, it's to the point where I'm like, do it. You gotta call their bluff sometimes, man. Like if they say they're gonna do it, go do it, and then let's see what happens. I, it, 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 I'm tired of them saying things just to get a reaction and a rise out of people, distract you from other things. If they're actually going to say they're going to do it, call the bluff on it. Make see if they'll do it. Because this is get, it's getting to the point like put up a shut up. That's what people have got to do to this administration. Put up a shut up. You say you're going to break things. You say you're going to screw things up. You say you're going to do these things. Go and do it. Them and all the rest of these administration, they can't even get. They got the majority. You still can't kill Obamacare, can they? Wonder why. Sam, Sam I think we can hear your keyboard. Go, no, no, wait, wait. No, give, give us the voice. The voice. You're not getting the voice. Oh, swear to oh. me. Swear to me. <laughs> All right, so no, it's, a, it's it's an interesting conversation, but not not to get too far into the politics of things because this is yeah. very, it's very hard not to get into the politics here. But the the, the point of this simply is uh, simply is we have a merger that's going to happen that might benefit consumers um, because we have two organizations, AT and T and Time Warner, that could come together and actually provide a better, stable, more oh, proliferates uh, you know internet communication across certain parts of the of America that doesn't currently have great internet communication. It, 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 it also generates more media content, which might generate more jobs. But we're being told that consumers can be held hostage by an administration that does not like the, the amount of coverage or the type of coverage it is getting. Um, this really smirks of an authoritarian or a klepto um a kleptocracy right now um it, it, it smirks of the idea and e you're familiar with this coming from a third world country like i do yeah, of, it's of, straight of up government leadership. yeah of governments that actually you know not just the play to the pay to play which is which is which happens almost everywhere but this is very reminiscent of a government that refuses to function without bribery without corruption without people kowtowing to the oligarchs of uh, uh, you know of that particular nation and it, 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 it's it, it does not benefit the consumer and that's the big thing here it does not benefit 
like the consumer, does not benefit the citizenry. So I don't think this is something where you have to be, try so hard to convince people to go out and speak out against it, because this should be obvious enough for people to say, okay, I am going to go out and speak out against this. This is not a decision being made by the SEC. This is not a, a, a decision being made by the, um, um, you know, by the, what's it called? What, what's a session do again? Uh, Justice Department. It is not any of, it's not a decision made by any arm of government, but simply just the executive branch sending out a quote unquote memo or suggestion or talking point about how they can scuttle a deal because they don't like a particular coverage of them. This, this is unacceptable. And granted, and granted, it's from a subsidiary of the larger company, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that whole idea of freedom of speech, you know, those things, independence, those things that, you know, we hold it, it, true and here. It all here. comes into question. No, it all comes um, into, into question, right? Yeah, it no, all comes it, into question. It, it definitely does come into question, but it also it also points to the fact of how business will be done. Now, on a tech perspective, and you know how tech companies, I mean, the way the tech industry has grown in the last uh, five, six years is, you know, if you're big enough, you acquire a smaller company, or you acquire a competitor, because that's how you expand, that's how you get better, and that's how you also you know, stifle off competition is because that's what you want to do. Now, some of these companies would be looking at things and saying, okay, wait, um, are we on that board with, you know, the, the tech board with Trump? Is that something that will affect us because we're not there? Is that something where now any moves we make that may be beneficial for us and our customers may not work? Or is this something now we have to now kiss asses Oh, kiss in the order. ring. Oh, if you want to, you can still say kiss the ring because that's yeah. a very apt uh, analogy. In, right? in order for us to conduct business in you know in this present framework, where you know things can't go through the normal status quo of yes, there's a merger. Some people like it, some people don't. It has to go through the process, and then if it goes, it goes. You know, plain and simple. But now this is you know this is going like you know to Sam's point. You know this is straight up dictatorship in terms of behavior. Um, a prime example I'll give you, I'm not gonna go to Nigeria, I'll give you one with Mugabe, where he, he, there was elections and he ran an ad on TV, it's actually on YouTube somewhere, and the ad said, had a person in the car driving really fast and slammed into a wall. And then a, <laughs> a, a statement came up and said, not voting for Mugabe is tantamount to suicide. <laughs> That's pretty much what this says. It says, you know, not doing what the White House wants is tantamount to you losing business or you not moving forward as company. And it's a scary thing because it doesn't bode well for businesses or the financial markets or even innovation to a certain degree. And, you know? and, and, and it does hurt the American consumers. Because I, I really want to step away from the politics of this and go more to the here and now the consumer aspect. Another news that came out this week, and I'm sure everyone heard about this news, is that Australia now has a battery complex that is funded by who? Tesla. So Tesla is going out to Australia to build the largest a in the world. The largest in the world, right? Tesla, which is an American company, is going elsewhere to build a a, a battery plant that will facilitate, you know. Um, or should I say, reduce the use of carbon or uh, or carbon fuel? around the world. This is the biggest plant. Why is it doing that? Because we live in a country where the idea of clean energy is being basically choked by the idea of clean coal or <laughs> the idea of keeping coal jobs. We have to be a little bit more educated about how our stances to save you know, dying industries hamper our consumers hamper our economy, hamper our innovation. This is this is a scary, scary time for anyone who believes that technology is probably the you know the bedrock or probably the opening to a lot of people jumping into a more free, just and a even wider economy. It creates jobs as much as it proliferates freedom. And we need to understand this and people need to begin to see how these kinds of decisions, even as small as a memo as it might be, or as small as it might be like a memo, um, it affects the way that we live our lives. It affects the way that we put food on our tables. It affects the consumers. Yeah, definitely great. 
Um, I any more thoughts? Them, I just want them to have the balls to go and do it. I'm tired of them saying <laughs> the Fred mentioned. This is America. Fuck you, do it. No. Nah. Seriously. No, no. Nah, nah. gonna fail. Of- that doesn't scare me because it's gonna fail horribly, and I know it is. But I want them to go and do it because they need to take a fucking L. No, nah, I don't. I don't believe in people needing to fail in order to learn a lesson. I think. No, I, do. I, mean, I, mean, I do. I mean, to, oh, I to, do. to Warren's point, I'm not going to talk about other political things, but there's certain things that I've talked about with you that said they need to just do it and let's see because you I, need to I mean, take I, that L before you get it. I kind of, fe- I kind of feel, I kind of feel what Warren says. I mean, I don't want it to happen, but part of no, it, I'm split 50 50. Half of me is like, yeah, go ahead. The other half is like, this is terrible. You know, so I don't know. Maybe I'm um, Harvey Dent. You know, two faced. What are they gonna? What are they gonna? What are they gonna meddle in? What are they gonna stop? Gap. Once all the rules and all the laws of the land say that they could go ahead and do it, what the hell can he actually do? Um, well, I mean, uh, actually, quite a bit. But Kashi Faraja yeah. in our live chat has your presidential slogan for your 2020 run: "Put your balls on the line, Warren for President 2020." <laughs> Warren for President 2020. Put your balls on the line. <laughs> All right, let's I move on, guys. Let's move on. I, 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 we're, we're, we've done the politics thing a little too much already. Moving on to our favorite company we always like to talk about on the weekly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who refreshing. likes to do stuff? Um, so Microsoft is laying off 3,000 employees as it tries to boost Azure. And, you know, this is going to come, a lot of these will come from um, overseas as well as the sales department. Less than 10% of Microsoft's sales force, so 75% of the cost will come from you, from outside the United States, and reorganization efforts will help Microsoft build up Azure and its cloud platform. Um, now, let me just see. Bloomberg pointed out that both Google and Amazon online offering services for commerce and boost their prowess in AI in addition. Neither company has enormous legacy software sales businesses that can maintain its great expense reducing for its customers. So Microsoft is trying to combat that. It looks like that is coming from that legacy aspect of the company. But for me, this points to some of the discussions we've had in the past and how sadly, it seems like the vision of Microsoft, Microsoft, sorry, Microsoft is very myopic and and very um, thinly focused. CEO Satya Nadal is, you know, server guy, it's cloud guy. That's what he likes. But I, I think he, um, to me, part of me feels like he fails to see the certain point of where the company is as a whole, or where the company should be as a whole. I'm not saying that you shouldn't boost your server business. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do all these things. I'm not saying that you, you know you shouldn't have reorganizations, but Microsoft has always had reorganizations. They had certain aspects of the company where it needed boosting that you move people around, and that is what I I'm, I fail to see here. Where if you have a surface division growing, and you have um, a lot of these, a lot of cloud AI stuff happening, why not reorganize some of these people to there so that I will still connect back to your AI device? I mean, I don't get it. Let's just call it what it is. I don't understand. And not because I don't understand these things. I don't understand what's going through that dude's head. Let's just put it out here. I think this is just very bad. And Warren said at a point, he said, they've just taken, even though these cuts are not necessarily in, you know, the consumers facing um, sides of the company, they have put themselves with just a statement in a backseat to Apple and Google, just purely, and Amazon. Let's even add that in that sense. But... I want to get your thoughts, guys. I'll start off with you, um, Juan, Mr. Red. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else <laughs> called me out, like me talking about regulations, and you're like, "Oh, look at Juan's a commie this week," and you're like, "Oh, <laughs> I guess I guess I am actually wearing the uniform, um, even down to the jaunty cap." Um, okay, Microsoft. It this is this is what's making me so nervous about where this company is going, and it's precisely what you what you were mentioning. Where is the future of Microsoft? What's going to make them successful moving forward? And right now, they're not generating a lot of confidence in expanding on their markets and in building the the services and the data centers and the the products that are really going to generate consumer interest moving into the next generation. I, you, for for multiple 
shows on both this podcast and the weekly and, and basically anyone who will hear me prattle on about this stuff. You know, you point to companies like IBM who completely lost the business and the uh, consumer facing sectors um, have amazing technology investments in things like uh, art artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we'll never get to see it. We'll never get to see like that practical hands on experience where we can all use it. And we look at Microsoft and I feel they're falling into the same trap. You know, they keep teasing us with updates to Windows 10 and oh, oh, you know, we're still thinking about another Windows phone that could still happen. And, and look at this amazing HoloLens and we've got these VR developer kits. And you're like, that's great. When can I play with it? When can you show me that you're actually moving forward on these products? And then we see the behind the scenes stuff that's going on with the company and their labor force and they're cutting jobs from that front facing consumer facing sector. So, you know, their, their problem usually isn't, do they make a good product? Their problem is usually how do they communicate what's new about their product to consumers and how do consumers get support for those products? And what is the relationship between customer and manufacturer? And so when you're cutting jobs from that side of the business, that makes me even more nervous for where Microsoft could be heading into the future. Short story, incredibly long. <laughs> uh, Warren, how about you? Um, yeah, just to touch on what kind of Juan said there. Um, it, the moves that they're making have made it, it, it made it very apparent that Microsoft is going in a very different direction and, and getting caught into that trap, such as IBM is, a, is probably one of the best examples of it, where we'll show up a whole bunch of cool things, but chances of us actually seeing it coming to fruition to where you actually get it in the hands are probably very limited. We're talking about a, a, consumer, a, a company now that it's only consumer facing products are, 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 I guess, technically office, even though they've really geared, even geared that more towards business users. Um, I, I will give them one note because this is also a, imagine, imagine Zagi, imagine Zagi paying for Microsoft office is ridiculous. The one thing that I'll give them consumer facing on that is that they moved it to the iPad. When we got mobile apps that were actually pretty good for Microsoft office, that's the one example I can give Microsoft kudos for, <laughs> but they, but they, they're still but, paying attention to people who might not run data centers. Uh, but, but even then, that was done. Even with then, the no, 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 I totally agree. I totally agree. But it was still like, okay, I can download an Excel app and at least look at these spreadsheets before I have to give them money. All right, I'll give them a kudos there. <laughs> it's um, but yeah, they're just it's. They're in a space where they're they're almost trying to be as least consumer facing as, as as they possibly can be, outside of the Office product, the Windows product, and the um, the uh, the the Surface and um, and Xbox products. I'm actually kind of nervous about the Surface and Xbox products. I think the Xbox product will stick around, but uh, the Surface product, I don't know. They make I, I, even with the new products that they put out here and the price they put them at, it's still a little uneasy in sort of what they've been doing. They haven't really been innovating in that space as much as they've have in the past. So it, it's it's telling me that they're the, what they really want to be is just a you know business facing services uh, company and they'll offer a few consumer services that can kind of give them a lifeline and that they want to boil that down to just everything funnels through windows and windows 10 and the windows store and they hope everyone just consumer facing them kind of goes through that particular portal the only problem i see, you know i see with that is is that besides people getting the operating system people use everything else but microsoft services for the majority of things that they, you know, majority of things that they do. So, you know, there's no phone tie-in. There never will be a phone tie-in. They cannot put out another phone for probably, I'd have to say, they, they would have to, they would have to be out of the market for another five years for anybody to trust them again to put out any sort of device. Because if they put out something now, no one's going to pay attention to it until maybe the third, maybe fourth year of them putting it out that maybe they might have something. But then again, they won't have the ecosystem because they won't invest in getting other services on there because they want to force you to use their services that nobody's using. So I'm not quite sure what they, I, I'm not quite sure where they're going to be standing in the consumer facing space real soon. And I don't think it's going to be a really good thing, but they're in, they're, they're in a lucky space that the other, <coughs> the other people that are ahead of them 
in Amazon and Google and in and Apple outside of Apple don't have a desktop based operating system of some kind that can challenge Windows, especially at the consumer level. They none of them have really put a focus on that. They don't really care to do that just yet. But if one of them actually decided, hey, we can probably challenge Microsoft here too and put out yeah. something just as good, just as feasible compatible with all sorts of software and it's connected to services that that consumer already uses they're I, in for a world of hurt see i like it again i think apple was too early in calling an ipad a pro but when i'm traveling in china without my laptop and i can still cut video that looks remarkably like what i can do from my laptop and render it in 4k and upload it through a vpn around china's great firewall like that's all from a phone. I didn't feel like not having my laptop was a severe handicap while traveling. Oh, good for you. I would never try that. I would hate it. I'm but telling it, you, it worked, it worked so much better than oh. I thought it would. Okay. And it was one major expensive piece of hardware that I didn't have to keep track of while flying internationally. You know, you know the um, one thing the one we're, thing we're that... on the road for Windows getting getting hurt really bad by mobile. Uh, mobile operating systems. It, it, I don't even think that's even the issue. I think the issue is the fact that as a company, Microsoft has, you know, when the idea of making Windows across all platforms, right, when they said that with Windows 8 was great. But for some reason, as a company, they're not thinking outside the box. The reason I say that is look at how much Amazon has grown from a company that used to have very tight margins. Remember, Amazon margins where they will make profits in the millions, not billions like how Google and Apple and the rest of them did. And they decided to re-diversify the things they do, especially on the consumer front. Now, you know, it's great to see Amazon have a phone lineup that is not Amazon built. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how thinking outside the, the box is. They're like, you know what? We've got a bunch of smaller manufacturers we can support. We can cut the price down. People want some of these devices, and you will have them on Amazon Prime for a cheap amount of money. The Echo, expanding that Echo line and being number one in um, connected homes is something that Amazon has done. Again, that is has nothing to do directly with a screen or anything else. And that is what Microsoft, you know, when HoloLens was announced, we thought, okay, maybe this is their chance to break out of that mold. And as a company, they just, you know, um, I, I think it was I Imagine said it. They like to dabble, they don't like to jump in. You know, yeah. they like to go, ooh, ah, ah, nah, nah, we'll take a seat back. But before I even continue lamenting, uh, Sam, um, please join in. Oh, I thought you were never going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I did yeah. kind of jump back in there. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> no, I think everyone basically opined on it quite a lot, but uh, I, I think it's very telling that um, that Microsoft continues to lose uh, revenue when it comes to its phone and mobile divisions, and I think that's going to have an impact on it, right? This 3,000 jobs being cut from a um, sales perspective is, to me, not as worrying as what it's done over the past few years, right, with cutting jobs on the mobile and hardware side. So, you know, just looking at, um, at, at Microsoft right now um, to understand exactly where they're at, it's like last year, or should I say last quarter, they made a 93% bump in revenue from um, from LinkedIn, right? They made close to a billion in revenue from LinkedIn. So focusing more on that makes sense to them. But although they made close to a billion in LinkedIn, they forgot that they lost about 8.8 .8 billion from mobile, from the mobile side of things. That's including surfaces as well, right? So at the end of the day, it's like, if you don't focus on your hardware, you're losing more money than you are while you're focusing on you know, your cloud platforms. So you need, they need to be a little bit more cognizant of how hardware affects your business. You know, they cannot be a hardware free um, organization that just pushes cloud and um, services, or uh, cloud services. That's that's not gonna work for Microsoft. It's, I think their revenue, or should I say the last quarter revenue has shown it, um, you know, the customer, um, awareness and acceptance over the last few over the last few years has shown this they need to focus more on hardware i don't know how else you can continue to knock this over satana Della's head to say hey focus more on hardware but hey 
he's the CEO, and I think he's making some pretty interesting decisions that I do. Yeah, I mean, with. services matter, but you having some control over where those services are used. Yeah, the ecosystem. Just, you need an it's ecosystem. Very important to maintain profitability. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm like I said they're very lucky <clears throat> now that for the to the time being and probably for the future for a few more years. Windows will be the dominant platform on most people's computing devices that will, yeah, because I know people count Android and I, I, I always view and understand this person's computing, but stuff that's on a mobile device, if you very differently from what's in, what's in front of you in terms of a PC and they're lucky they're going to dominate that desktop computing and laptop computing space, probably for two or three more years, it would just be once processors on the mobile side get get more powerful the software gets better um things such as a lot of things we do in terms of uh design and graphic design and video editing maybe gets more cloud ready more things that get more processed on the servers and stuff like that um where they will be when you can just take like Juan said take your tablet and you can upload a 4k you know video you just recorded to let's say adobe's cloud platform for adobe uh premiere be able to edit that in real time over a solid connection edit it change everything you need upload it and do it all from either tablet platform or smartphone platform or 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 you know maybe even a a um a, a, a low-end computer or something like that and you won't need to be tied into having to have it on a you know Windows PC to be able to do so. What's their response going to be at that point? Because they won't have any hardware to counteract that. Yeah. And well, and, and their current more, system of making Windows into a service actually could work against them when we start playing with exactly what you're talking about. So, so you know, like in Android, we're already talking about um web apps again you know we're kind of coming full circle from where we were with the original iphone where you don't yeah. really need to download the full app but if you're working through a browser or some other sort of internet connection you can download a piece of what's relevant about that app and what i've been shocked by what you can do on an app like cyberlink power director locally for h.265 content for content shot from my camera mixing footage from different sources adding uh, filters, adding uh, transitions, titles, uh, graphics and overlays, transparencies, multiple audio sources with the proper mixer. I mean, like, I, it was all done on my phone. <laughs> like, I, I did everything on my phone. So it's not ready for prime time, but it's pretty damn close. Yeah, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I know Sam has said this quite a bit earlier that Satya needs to go. Um, I concur. If the company wants to um, maintain that nice buffer of uh, market cap that it has at five hundred billion dollars or whatever the amount is, and you know keep making money, but we will have to wait and see. Now, speaking of making money and fights, Qualcomm filed um, lawsuits <laughs> against um, Apple, saying that it's infringing on six of its patents, which. Um, have to do with extending a phone's battery life, and those have nothing to do with the current battle they're having. So Qualcomm is fighting back. Um, me personally, I like this because no one has fought Apple this much constantly. So <laughs> you know what? Feel free, go ahead, fight. Because eventually, because here's the thing which I, I find interesting and has nothing even to do with this. It's the fact that Qualcomm at, um, is it uh, CES Shanghai or well, there was a, what was CES, I can't remember, MWC Shanghai, whatever, CES Shanghai. Qualcomm announced the fingerprint sensor, which would go underneath the screen or through metal. Uh, it will be available come early next year, so spring of next year. And it doesn't look like... I don't think the iPhone 8 might have it. I'm just saying I don't know. I'm just from all indication. It also looks like Samsung is going to get it too. Um, it looks like so Qualcomm is now leveraging what it has, plus throwing some suits and seeing what Apple will do to react. Because as we we're discussing earlier, Juan, it's where is the price point? It's all about money, right? It's all about 
yeah, you know, how much are you willing to pay? And it seems at least, it, again, like for my own personal enjoyment, there's a company telling Apple, you can't screw everyone over. The reason I say this, if you don't know, Apple is well known for screwing companies over when it comes to uh, manufacturing, making different things left and right, and also with lawsuits as they dealt, you know, took Samsung to the cleaners for a while. So I'm just personally happy on that point. That has nothing yeah, to do with it. I mean, I think we can, we can fairly criticize Qualcomm for too, yeah. undue influence over specific markets as well. When we start looking at chipsets and radios and modems that are used in different devices. But when it comes to this type of showdown, especially as we see Apple struggling, I mean, the iPhone got a little bit of negative press when they started changing up, uh, what was it, the Intel? Yeah, Intel chips, uh, Intel's uh, modem, sorry. The, Intel's mo the, the Intel modem. So, you know, if you're going to use intellectual property and you don't want to pay licensing fees, then yeah, a fight like this needs to be dragged out into the courts. Um, the, the, the story that you linked from Tweak Town was hilarious because it's like, it's, it's as terribly <laughs> editorialized, like, you got to pay up or shut up, Apple. You know, <laughs> like it wasn't really um, unbiased <laughs> news reporting as much as it was sort of uh, frustrated editorial. Um, but, but, but it kind of, it kind of points to like how a lot of people, at least I know a lot of people are like, you know what, even if, even if you can say, look, Qualcomm has some fault here. Like I said, me, I'm like, I don't care. I'm like with Apple, you know, especially how they screwed IBM back in the day in that switch. I'm like, you guys need one of these L's. As Warren says, somebody needs to take an L and they need an L <laughs> right there, one of these. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Sam, any, any thoughts? Um, it, <clears throat> I think it's, it's still pretty um, early in, 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 in this battle or in this fight to know exactly how things are going to turn out. Um, I think both parties have somewhat of a point. Um, you know, there is there is an idea that, you know, Qualcomm might be double dipping in a way, right? So that's what the initial um, Apple suit was in January, where it's suing Qualcomm over intellectual property royalties. Now, Qualcomm came back and said, hey, guess what? If you're going to do that, if you're not going to pay us, we're going to have an injunction to say you can't, you know, uh, we're going to have a junction against your, 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 your chip manufacturers and say you can't produce our chips, right? Um, and then, you know, the recent, the, the recent news is that now Qualcomm, Qualcomm is actually fighting a patent suit against, um, against Apple. So this is this is really just the beginning salvos. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of agreement comes out of this. Uh, if it's a revenue sharing kind of agreement, or if um, you know, if, if Apple continues to do what it seems to be, you know, um, what, what it seems to be on the path of doing, which is divesting itself of a lot of third party involvement in the iPhone, trying to bring more of that production in house. That might be a good idea for Apple overall. That might give us a more uh, clean, more streamlined Apple experience. But overall, if you're going to use someone's technology and patents, you kind of do have to pay for it. <laughs> but if you're someone who basically is not at the point of a monopoly, but one of the biggest names in chip manufacturing, you can't try to double dip against a company as big as Apple because they will call you out on it. That's about what it is. Although I think it's it's telling. Like the one thing that I'm almost positive will certainly never ever happen because of the companies involved is the iPhone is never going to be blocked from being sold in the United States. Yes. Like, that's not a thing. That's not going to work. It is two U.S. companies duking it out. Well, what if, what if the White House decides to meddle in it? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Our president does use a Galaxy S3, something like that. Imagine imagine if he went and blocked Apple. He would do that just for the press that it would cause. The hysteria. People would be marching out there like he put... People would be out there marching at airports again just like they did for the whole travel ban. iPhone ban happens. They're going to lose their shit. I mean, you know, that would be equal to a travel ban. You know that too. <laughs> you, of, because you can't, you can't travel with your phone at that point. I would love to see it. I would just love to witness... The, the people just getting dysfunctional over the over that whole thing. The thing for me is simply this, right? If, if I am a Qualcomm and I charge a royalty for company XYMZ to make a, uh, to make a chip, 
does Apple have to pay me again a license to use that chip in their um, you know in, in their hardware? My uh, answer to that is no. My answer is yes. If there's no legal reasoning not to. No. Okay. So what you're saying is, if you're buying a product from me, mm -hmm. and I already pay a license for that technology. You also have to pay a license for the technology that I'm paying a license for. Well, well this is this is what's complicated, Sam. Is <laughs> yeah, no, because because no, I, I mean, I, I agree with your sentiment. It, you know, where where exactly is the transaction taking place? Yeah. But but the company that's making the chipset Chip is, is not Apple manufacturing it off of Apple's reference. So yeah. if Apple is the one who's making the chip, that's great. Now, the company that's actually fabricating the chipset might be using other processes or utilizing other intellectual property from Qualcomm. So they might need to pay Qualcomm for that mm -hmm. information as well. And that's where we can't know because I'm sure these licensing deals are like uh, thousands yeah. of pages yeah, long. Yeah, they're, they're multiple. Like, yeah. and, and Qualcomm has a lot of licensing deals, but this is why they lost in China or South Korea. This is why they lost in South Korea. No, it's not, it's not the because same. It is one. I'm not saying it's the same exact thing, but I'm saying why they lost in South Korea is because they have too many patents that basically make sure that any manufacturer now pays multiple times or pays such a huge cost for using Qualcomm patents. And a lot of times it's basically cross pollinated across a bunch of different um, um, ideas or uh, intellectual property. So it's, it's you have to be a little um, cognizant, I would say, as Qualcomm, you have to streamline your patent process. Or they don't amazing. think they do because they're making money. On yeah, it. well, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I get they, I, I get, they, they, I get. They, can, they, can, they can absorb the 850 million easily. No, I, 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 get, I get the logical Korea. point. But yeah. also, again, too, it's like saying, you know, again, we don't know the intricacies of the deal. Say, yeah. my thing is, I'm Qualcomm, and uh, Warren has to pay royalties for using my uh, patents to build chipsets. <laughs> and, and you, as Sam, who's Apple, have to pay royalties for actually using it if you're buying it from Warren. It doesn't matter. You didn't buy it from me. I don't care. I mean, basically, it's my. It's still my license that you must have a right. You must have a a, a payment for it to say you're going to use it, and he has to have a payment for for development. I get it, but then again, it becomes more complicated as it goes across many. And, 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 you know, and that's so why I think it would be very interesting to see how this fight plays out, because I can see both sides holding to their guns, right? Qualcomm can definitely say, you signed an agreement with us and we're going to hold you to it. And Apple can say, yes, you guys are double dipping and you know we've seen what happened in South Korea and we're going to basically try to fight this. But at the end of the day, they will have to come to some sort of agreement. And that is going to be funny as hell to oh, no, see yeah. exactly where they come up with. Yeah, to, to, me, to me, the person who takes that loss and that agreement is still Apple. I don't think so. I do. I do. You know, I, I think so is this is that on Qualcomm side of things, right? The one thing that the the, the iPhone needs is the modems. Yeah, you but mean, I don't think anyone takes a loss from this. I think that why I think this is going to be very funny is that both of them are probably going to sit down and go, I think we should just do a revenue share. And that would be like, oh, really? You guys have to figure this out after suing yourself? No, no, no. But, but I think to me, that's to, how it's going to but play But to me, out. that's an Apple loss. I don't think that's an Apple you know, loss. It's an Apple loss because Apple is well known historically for burning. Look, they fought Samsung to the yeah, team. Yeah, so you take a revenue really. loss, that's a loss for you. That's a yeah, win for Qualcomm. Yeah. Well, a revenue share might be. Yeah. Yeah. If you take a revenue share, Apple anyway. has engaged in everything they can possibly do to minimize any impact on the margins yeah. that they have for products like the iPhone. That that's that cool. actually would be, I think in their opinion, would be would be a loss. Well, if it opens them into, uh, or if it opens them up to getting a little bit more, uh, I wouldn't say preferential treatment, but early access to a lot of these chips, that might not be a loss for them. I'm just thinking of, from that point of view, it might not be a loss for them. It might actually put them at a point to start competing with a Samsung that gets basically almost first dibs in a lot of chips. Yeah, <laughs> so, but I don't think that they're they're too worried about that. I mean, no, they're, they're not really worried. No, I know they're not worried about that per se, but I'm saying that could be a positive from it. I I think I think revenue share would be a bigger loss for them, even if they got some kind of. IP head start on newer technologies. And I, I mean, it's one of the few things that I think the the Apple designed chipsets have done really well is they're they're usually ahead of the Qualcomm curve anyway, that 
I, I don't see where that would be any significant win for them. Yeah, I mean, the only benefit for them is is modems because we know yeah. Intel's modems just aren't even. Close. Although, I mean, like I a, co a company like Intel manufacturing in that space, I, I say two more generations and they could probably catch up. I like I, I wouldn't be too concerned about the deficiency right now. I, I know it's. I, I don't trust Intel about. and mobile at right. all. Yeah, I don't, especially what they just <laughs> did with X in the mobile a part of the mobile I division. I bad. trust Intel wherever they can make money. Again, it's it's not like they've got any kind of vested interest. If they become the premier manufacturer of iPhone radios, there's money to be made there. Oh, no, no, let's I mean, say their radios are 2% less efficient than Qualcomm's. That's an acceptable margin of error. I mean, I mean, I guess you could say that. The only reason I said it is because last year, basically Apple capped Qualcomm modems just so that it would be the same experience across the board. Yeah. With the Intel ones, which means you're just getting a slower internet connected iPhone. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the X16 architecture on the A35 is also very, very good. That's that's what's really taking us to a that you know gigabit um, internet. Yeah. Speed. And the X X20 when it comes out with 845. Yeah, so it's it's yeah, going to be. So. It's, it's, I think Qualcomm is pretty much, you know, pretty far ahead, and also the way it's implemented. You know, you don't have to the switching. When it comes to um, uh, Qualcomm switching from one um, one source of connectivity to the, to the other, is done almost seamlessly versus what Intel's offering, which is like it shuts off some some antennas to basically power uh, others. The power management is basically on point for the A35 and the X16 architecture. So Intel has a huge. A huge way to go to actually catch up with quality. Now, if you said I, Nvidia, I would have been like, okay, because Nvidia now is yeah, just dabbling yeah. whatever they want to dabble into. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just speaking of um, chipsets and dabblings and power, Red, the guys who make the Red cameras, yesterday announced <laughs> the Red Hydrogen <laughs> One. <laughs> holographic screens. Holographic <laughs> They mentioned specs like it was. The latest. Uh, Wait a latest. minute! Holographic screens. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know right? Is I know. Did, did, was Dan Hess at the announcement? <laughs> <laughs> you, okay, if you guys didn't know that, Dan, this, is a, this is a throwback to when Dan Hess was in Sprint, and oh, he announced boy. the first Sprint 3D phone. And uh, yeah, that's a whole, just a whole. Oh, Wasn't that an Evo? Wasn't it an Evo? Evo, it was yeah, Evo, Evo, Evo 3D. 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 Yeah. 3D. Yeah. Um, or just go watch our videos on that. <laughs> just go I watch. Dan Hess was the first CEO who I actually was like, this man does not know what the fuck his job is, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so like, wrong. I was like, read off, no. the, read off <gasps> a teleprompter. That was his job to read oh, off. Man. Look at the poor decision making, man. He had, oh, I'm sorry. I, I won't even go let's, into let's, that. Let's, look, look. Did he, he, let us not steal actually, the thunder from, from did he the actually, one. Did he actually does make any decisions? Is the question with that. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, someone said YMAX. Okay, sure, YMAX. Right, right. <laughs> do this. Anyway, I really felt bad for him because he was he was a really sort of charismatic and front. Like, I thought he was a really good front person to have for a company like Sprint. But, yeah, it, it, he was totally a, a an empty suit. I think yeah. for how yeah. that company was really being. All right, all right. Let, let's go back to the red hydrogen one, yeah, for a second, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so this right. one has holographic display, titanium finish, if you want. Um, you know, it's got a normal two D media, stereo three D stuff. The way the way even like Engadget is writing this stuff is like it's like yeah, it's got this and it's got that. And look, I don't care. The camera, this exist. thing, this camera, you can buy it though. You can actually order it. You can actually order it? Yeah. Yes. It doesn't. I, mean, I thought it was pre order. No, I thought oh, it was pre order. Sorry, pre order. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like my my bad. Thing already? Sorry, sorry, my bad. Well, my I, bad. Bad. I mean, I mean, you can also give me $3,000 for an amazing phone. That it's will... not $3,000. Let's just cool it back. Actually, oh, the price I don't, you can also price give price. me $4,500 for an unbelievable mind blowing no, no, no. smartphone it's, experience. It's not $4,500. To, to the you can credit, give me you could give me sixty thousand dollars for the best 60, AI three hundred and sixty <laughs> VR AR phone, and I and I will build it. I, I will. I promise. I will it, totally build it, and it will knock your socks off. No, no. But for the audience you here, money. You got to give me money first. For the audience here, the price is only a thousand one hundred and ninety-five. So to be fair, this is like you buying a Galaxy Note eight. Uh, 128 well, gigabytes. Yeah, much. but the Note 8 
will actually <laughs> exist when Samsung makes it exist. No, so my, <laughs> my thing with this phone is this. I don't know, you know, they mentioned all this specs and all this. I don't care about that. You are red. This camera has to blow away everything on the market. I mean, what I mean, blow away, it needs to, it needs to match it my camera. It basically needs to make sure the V20 basically is like a little boy at the end of the day. Like, just like no, it, needs to, there, it needs to make people's DSLRs quiver. Not die, but just go, ooh, is that a no, smartphone? You can't, you can't, you can't. No, no, can't. I don't care. No, your name is Red. You make an 8K yeah. camera, you need to show us that you can do marvels with this. Because that, all this, that this, I don't care about the rest of the stuff. Yeah, I, I completely agree. This is really dangerous territory for watering down the red brand. Unless they come out with something just, un I mean, like I was going to say epic, which is terrible. So that's the name <laughs> of yeah. um, if, if they can't, like, noticeably far exceed current smartphone camera tech, and, and not with like, oh, well, we've got this like snap on Wi-Fi camera system. Like, no, that's that's crap. We've gone through digital lenses and wireless camera systems like it needs to be on the phone. If it's not on the phone, then it's just as inconvenient as carrying around a separate camera. But, you know, we're, we're going to be comparing this all the way back to pure views. We're going to be comparing this to yeah. Panasonic's mobile uh, camera sensor system. And then we're going to be comparing it against proper cameras because the name is red. Just like we could sh we should compare NVIDIA hardware against proper desktop gaming solutions. We're going to be comparing red against proper photography and video solutions. And so many other companies have tried to walk into this space and have had better resources to jump into the phone space. Um, I, I, I feel like one of two things is most likely to happen. This camera is going to be baller and the phone is going to be terrible, or it's going to be a, a mediocre phone and a mediocre camera. You're going to have the worst of both worlds packed into one, one product. I, I, I will be so happy, but I will be incredibly shocked if uh, they manage to walk into this space with a first generation product and nail both the phone and the camera side of the equation. I mean, I mean, it, it is possible to do that if they simply just went with a nice basic display, whether it's QHD, whatever, right? Stock Android, nothing else fancy. Put all your money on that camera and call it a day. Right, but look <laughs> at what that did for Panasonic. True. You know, I, I mean, again, it, it, you're not wrong. It's just... A phone is a mission critical piece of communications hardware. Who experiments with a phone these days? You know, people have their teams. Like if you're a LG. OnePlus fan, if you're a Samsung fan, if you're <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, like from the consumers. Who, who, what consumers are out there saying, like, oh, you know what I really want to do is I want to take this phone that I know really well. I know how it works. I can get all my work done on it. And I want to put it off to the side and take a risk on a $1,200 phone because the camera might be a little bit nicer. You know, like no one's doing that right now. We do that because we review gadgets and yeah, our fans are that's more likely to take an experiment on something like that. But, but that's but who it's for. It's for the creators. But I wonder if this is a bigger play on just them selling a camera mobile camera technology that they, they then sell to the manufacturers uh, i think yeah. this is red i think i this would is be 100 percent. but from imagine, the beginning but, 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 i would be but, 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 much more excited about a red licensing agreement with lg but, than but, i would be red trying to do this on their own but imagine yeah. but imagine them like you get a you know galaxy note 8 Red red camera edition. So now you know you're getting a red camera with your Note Eight. Uh, that, that, that is that is the definition of diluting the brand, though. That, then no, no, no. But look at, no, I don't think so. I, I think I think so is absolutely. Okay, so who, who else uses a? Uh, 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 in what other industry? No, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Let no, me, but what but what it's going to allow them to do is get if they put that into there. That then. If people if people say, well, I like what's on my phone from Red, but I want to take the next step up, this allows them to create an actual consumer line that people will probably invest themselves into let instead me, of spending godly amounts of money to get get to get one of their cameras. Let me tell you something somebody who that worked well with, right? Even though, you know, its footprint in the mobile market was small, the fact that Nokia phones had Carl Zeiss lenses just yep, that alone yep. was Sony huge. did 
Sony did that for a long time. Long time. And it yep. really boasted their, the, 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 the fact that they could say Carl Zeiss lens. And I know, people, I know people were critical about the, the Leica-Huawei uh, relationship, but over yeah. these last two generations, Since, Leica's yeah. involvement has made Huawei cameras pretty stinking good. It's not something Huawei could have done all on their own. So I, I really think I, I would be a lot more excited, I should say. I would be a lot more excited about Red taking a licensing approach to... LGV30 Red? Hell yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I think that, that would be the best partnership too because Samsung yeah. already has their own aesthetic, their own lens manufacturing, their own sensor manufacturing. A company like LG, which has already taken some pretty significant steps into uh, improving the professional content creation side of mobile photography that would be an amazing partnership but red trying to do everything on their own making an entire phone all on their own i am skeptical of the first generation well people said oh, that about the initial Collins red people actually said that about the initial red, about the initial red right so when the initial red came out a lot of creators said the exact same thing they said the exact same thing that this camera is coming out it's supposed to do a b c and d shooting crew 4k whatever and it delivered on it Red has a consistent delivery. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. For a second, Red was a company based in the camera division. They yes. Into mobile. Yes, but this different. Yes. You're changing they, industries. They into you know, a market. No, no, they're no, not no. changing industries. No, but they had people. Yeah, they had people they understand who, that a lot more people are producing things still... on smaller budgets. That's no, what they but, understand. No, and I they get want it. to get a cut into that market. I That's get that, doing. but so, again, like like Juan said. <laughs> It's a mission critical device called a phone. It may be very well a it's, great camera, just like the how, LG. How are they selling this? What is the tagline for this? What is the tagline for this? Sam, great example. Holographic great example of this. This is to me that's a fail. That's a fail. You know why? Not a great great, great, great <laughs> media machine. Not even a great camera. example of this is the Lumia 1020. A great example of this is the Lumia 1020. The hands down had the best camera out of any smartphone in its time, but yet yeah, it was hampered. It was hampered and, it, and it was hampered by not a great phone. Well, I'll put it this way. You're coming from a company that was involved in the making of some pretty big A-list um, movies. Totally. Allied, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Transformers. You movies. Did so many names. Yeah, yeah, movies. No phones. Yeah. Look, look, look at YouTube and look at where YouTube is trying to go. They're trying to go into, you know, um, original content. Everyone is trying to go into that original content. If you can put on your original content, use is uses a red whatever, people are going to pay attention. Especially if that if you can whip out a, um, whip out a phone and on the fly create 4K or 8K content that you can upload to a YouTube, to a Hulu, to a whatever. You be on point. No, I know. I've been looking at the market and seeing how it's shifting. I, I, I agree. They're, they're I targeting agree. that market. Yeah, but you, but but Sam, for exactly that, you don't need red. Exactly. Exactly. I look here. I done. Can, I can done. Four K. I can put, put a way. multiplier for, for exactly AK, that. If I want red, to, for exactly that, red doesn't need a Samsung and they don't need an LG. Yeah, but they don't. They don't need to do this either. Look at the tagline. You said it yourself. The world's first holographic media machine. That's not recording video. I don't even know what it is at this point. Oh, if they're, I'm, they're, they're gonna make it. I have a holographic oh, machine. And then, and look, oh, wait. Let me keep reading here. Glass is not the Wearable displays are not spoken. Five point seven inch professional hydrogen holographic. Shut up. You still is a glass display. Stop lying to the people. It's not a, a goddamn. Dude, I mean, they, what haven't is even, they haven't even come out with the tech. So exactly let them come because out with they the don't have it. Because they don't I have it. I'll put it this way: burning up their asses. It's not vaporware. Red has never released vaporware, so no, from their consistency, no, it is not vaporware. They have a track record of actually delivering stuff, they don't have so a track no, record in not this vaporware. industry, and they have no one in this so industry. So, no one is allowed so, to break industries now. And they, and so basically, if, you don't want to hold it, Samsung or LG, you don't want it. I'm sorry, no, but no, that's no, kind no, of no. backward thing. Since they don't have the tech, I'm sorry. Look, um, you're calling holographic. It's probably you know another. Who cares about uh, the holographic? We all know what, the, mar the no, marketing no, no. term. That's what they put in the marketing. So I will the call them on their marketing. The marketing term before no, no. I can 
for KK Mouse. You put it on your that? marketing. It's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just, no, I'm sorry. If you put it on your marketing, I'm going to call you on marketing. You don't tell people not to produce something just because, oh, there are all these other guys already doing stuff. I'm not saying they should not produce it. I'm saying that, look, they might make better phones and still cameras better, but this is red we're talking about. This is a movie maker we're talking about. I would give them the benefit of the doubt. I won't give them the benefit of the doubt because I have no trust in them making a phone. In making a phone camera, maybe, but not a phone. It's two different things. I'm sorry. I can't call them out for putting bullshit specs here. I'm looking at the spec sheets and I'm like, you're just talking about hydrogen. They have no specs. About, exactly. They have no specs. They don't write specs. Then sheet. what are you so livid about? They have no specs. Give because them the benefit they call of the doubt. Details. And all I see is hydrogen 500 times. This is the difference between product and product. Now. Specifications. This Everyone, is dope. We, we, we all see that with all devices, right? Product details, product specifications. This product Samsung, details is hogwash, man. Crystal clear, I LED, drunk, high, whatever. and I write better stuff than this. They're putting hydrogen five times in here. This is rubbish. They like they, they like hydrogen and they like holographics. This is but terrible. I still give them the benefit of the doubt. I will still give them the benefit of the doubt because they have a track record. And watch this phone fail. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, the thing guys. is, like, there's, there's giving them the benefit of the doubt, but I think one of the things that we can take away from this is how excited are we now to get about <laughs> new upstarts in the phone industry? Because I feel like, you know, and this is something we've we've also talked about a lot about before too, is that the smartphone market has plateaued and has matured to a point where we count on these things in very specific ways, and that's unique to every consumer. So if Red can come in with a solution targeted towards content creators and it can go after the YouTube set and it doesn't wreck the brand's reputation, then that's great. But I'm still highly skeptical of any company that can make a first gen product because that's what we're talking about, whether or not Red can meet goals. You know, the initial launch for Red cameras wasn't exactly seamless. They just evolved over time, but they evolved in an industry that takes a long time to iterate. You know, cinema, the cinema industry does not flip tech every eight months. You know, if, if you want to look at RE cameras, the Alexa, it's a 2K camera that's still more than competitive in terms of dynamic range for producing feature films. And I loved shooting on the Alexa. That was an amazing camera. I would still shoot on one today, even though we've got cameras that can shoot 4 and 8K. So they had the time in the cinema space to perfect their product, to build it out, to get it into the right hands, the Peter Jacksons, to do demos and show what it could do for digital. We were still skeptical of digital versus film and Red helped us uh, you know, walk through that transition. They're walking with phones into an incredibly mature, an incredibly plateaued market with some gimmicks, you know, they're talking about things which don't really exist yet, and they're talking about pre uh, pre order pre sales, and you can buy two left seen, by the way. And, and we've seen a number of companies also try and walk into the space that also do a very good job of delivering on products that still couldn't crack the phone market. So again, I'm I'm excited to see what they do, but I'm keeping my expectations very low. And this will be one of those things like as we review products, we have to figure out who is the audience for this product. Yeah. Even if this red phone is all baller, like everything is perfectly executed for first gen, cracking that $1,000 price point, talking about $1,200 territory, we're still talking about a niche of a niche at best. Thank you. Thank you. Holographic H4. I I mean, yeah, I'm no, wait, I don't see me off, right? The math uh, right uh, 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 before y'all go on the battle, <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta head out, guys. I'll talk to see you guys later. What? All right, what? yes, yeah, Warren has to run out. No, no, okay, see you later. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 my thing is this is it. I, I'm just getting pissed. I'm reading this. I'm going, you could have just written a statement saying you're making this phone and it's going to be awesome because of this, but then they. they it's this is creating junk. I hate when companies do this. How is it junk? It's junk I, I because really none of this understand. thing look because they don't even have this yet. That's that's why I'm that's why it's pissing me off. It's like hydrogen for view content. I mean, I'm like, guys, don't lie to us. When you, when you make <laughs> we it, you don't know no, what no, no. that means, so there's no, 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 no way they're lying to don't us. Even, no, don't mention it. Just say, just well, say you, you're going to have the next generation of this and then show it to me because I guarantee I, when it comes I'm, out I'm of not, Q1, it's going to be not as lit up. I'm not as lit up as E, but I do find it a little frustrating when a manufacturer's claims are so vague, are so vague that it could be anything. 
right? Yeah. Th this, this, they're using their own internal brand names in a way which is yeah. meant to get you excited, like Hololens. Like we are, oh, we can make holograms. And like you're not making holograms. You're exactly. making augmented reality. Or, or Apple Today, with augmented with, um, reality. Their display. Augmented what? reality is more exciting to me than holograms. Holograms are things that we messed around with in the '80s. <laughs> you know, like be real. And so that's where I do find some of this press announcement from Red to be a little frustrating is because they're purposely vague with what these technologies will actually bring to the, to the table in a way where they're trying to generate consumer sentiment and drive excitement. I'm not going to blame them for that because that's how the game's played now. Most of these purchases are more, more emotional than they are rational. But... It's, it's why we have sort of the platforms that we do in commenting on this stuff is to be able to share not only in the excitement of when a company is going to do something exciting, but then also to, to, to lend a critical eye or to help explain what it means when a company makes a transition like this. And so that's where I feel like the biggest source of conflict is happening between these two. It's like I can be both. I can be both excited that Red is going to try something in this space because I want to see a new company come in and shake things up and deliver something I've never seen before. But at the same time, we have way too much history and way too much track record of other top tier manufacturers. I, I'm going to throw it back to the Panasonic again. You know, Panasonic knows their way around a camera and they know their way around sensors and, and video and photography, and they could not crack this, the smartphone nut. So... Will Red walk out the gate and deliver something awesome? I'm highly skeptical. Can they improve a product? We know they can. Yeah. But can they improve a product in a way that resembles smartphone evolution? And can they put out updates? And can they put out support? And can they iterate on the product so that the Red Camera Phone 2 is an appropriate update but doesn't make Red Camera Phone 1 owners feel like they got the shaft? This is all tricky territory that even top tier smartphone manufacturers have difficulty navigating. All right, so outside my window right now is a dog running around chasing the ball. His owner, as owners or his humans, the, 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 the lady has the, uh, the leash on her wrist and the guy is holding the leash. So I don't understand what is going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Brooklyn, okay? I'm sorry, but did something- Sam's weird, world has okay? just been rocked. <laughs> Like so, the dog yeah. is running around chasing the ball, and the human is the one wearing the leash with the other human holding it. <laughs> I, I can, I can, I can feel your your frustration with that. Whatever, right. but, but I agree with what you're saying. I agree that, and yeah, it, it, uh, uh, um, uh, an amount of skepticism is, is is normal and natural when someone is promising you the world. However, if you told me that a guy who makes sunglasses was going to go into uh, go, basically going to revolutionize the way movies are filmed. I would have laughed at you as well because that's a huge leap, and he did it. He went from making this is, red is the same guy who created Oakley, who founded Oakley, went in to found red, and that was a huge leap. And this is much less of a leap. So yes, oh, there's is, a lot of this there's is a lot. Of, well, this is no, very no, no, I mean, no, to, the, to, no, that, to that same token, no. this is this is why we're entertaining the conversation at all. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, no, and, and I agree we're, we're probably, I mean, over the over the next week, especially because this announcement happened fairly quietly. Um, over the next week, I'm I'm thinking this will probably get just as much discussion, if not more, than Essential Phone did from Andy Rubin. I mean, look oh, at yeah. how quickly that faded after the initial bur uh, burst of press was Sprint. delivered. You know, so. Um, the, the, the fact that the Oakley guy was able to shift industries and move into camera tech and, and, yeah. and produce a, not only a competitive product, but sort of an industry defining product is the reason why we're entertaining this phone conversation at all. But again, I have to go back to my original point where he had a lot more time and a lot less pressure and way lower expectations when he started Red as a camera company. Everyone knew that digital sucked and that film was the way to go. And everyone knew that a digital camera would fail and maybe it would be good for like, you know, student filmmakers, but film is really the way that we want to do these things. And over a much longer period of time, he was able to shift the industry perspective. The digital didn't exist in the way that phones exist for consumers today. So this is a much different challenge. And again, I am willing to entertain the conversation because it is, you know, red 
because it is that label, because it is yeah. that brand, that brand brings a reputation, that's awesome. But this is a completely different challenge. So again, while I'm excited, I'm also super critical and I'm keeping my expect expectations very low. To my initial point I, I stated earlier, um, when I started, I said, I don't care about all the jumble they mentioned because Red has to give me a camera that Samsung, Apple, LG cannot compete. Not close. And you said it yourself, Juan. That's why I said I don't care about all these rubbish that they wrote in their press release. I want to see a camera that goes the same way Red changed the industry in film. And we all know how cameras work. It's got to be a bigger sense of size and all that. I was hoping for some of that kind of information in their press release where I would go, okay, man, these guys are mounting something hefty in there. But they gave me a bunch of mumbo jumbo, which is why I got pissed because I'm like, yeah, really? I think it's a combination of, you know, um, their marketing speak without basically, they're trying to do the same way they released the red, right? The initial red was more, hey, this is what we're going to do, not much in the specification side, but then once we started having like big time directors start getting their hands on it, more details started coming out. So yeah, I'm thinking this is like an initial interest, right? But People it's a very interested market in of doing that, right? You had well, big time directors like Lucas already who wanted to go digital. You know, well, and I get what you're saying, I, well, but think about this, right? Red also has a workflow product that they use. On a phone, you have to combine both of those. You can't really remove one from the other, right? Because you have to be able, it's, it's, a, it's an all-in-one solution, in essence. So yeah. I think they, they might have an edge over a lot of other manufacturers like no, no i know but LG see, or whatnot so when you when you're saying it has you're to going, be you, when, when you're saying, to my when point, you're right? saying it has to be better than a samsung i'm saying it can already come out and be better than a samsung because it's coming out with a lot of tools that they've learned from the movie making industry yeah again so but that's but that's that's my point my point is i don't care about you stating all these other rubbish that have nothing to do with a camera give me a camera that when i I go to an iPhone user and I, and I record, and they go, "Jesus Christ, is that a movie?" <laughs> Done. I, I think that was the, I think that was the Note Four. No, wasn't no, that no, the no, Note Four? No, and then it was the Note Five, and yeah. then it was the Note Five. No, 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 I'm saying five. that's when your name is red. That's what you have to do. I don't care about anything else. You don't win me on software or holographic display. That's what Samsung, Apple, and everybody is supposed to do. You're supposed to come in and change that industry from one perspective out. And you can't give me a press release with mumbo jumbo when you're a camera person. I mean, what is that? This is not to say, that's why I said, I get it. I want to see this. Wait, they will put specs out there. <laughs> I, I want to see it succeed. It's coming out Q1. I just want to see it succeed, but please don't drop this rubbish. Like this is just, it's this hard much. So guys, I think we're kind of repeating ourselves. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, I, 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 moving on, moving on, moving on. Motorola is having an event on the 25th in New York for the Moto X. Motors have released a bunch of phones lately, man. Speak as though you have phone fatigue, man. Huh? If you speak like though you have phone fatigue, like Motorola's been releasing a bunch of phones. You no, know, I mean, think about it, right? They released the Moto G5 two months ago. They released the Moto Z Play last week. And now they're announcing the Moto X. There's no spacing. Yeah. That's all I'm just going to yeah. say. But I know. Uh, any thoughts, Juan? No, I mean, that's actually exactly the, the point that I was going to lead with is... I fear Motorola is starting to step on their own toes. Like mm -hmm. I, I like having clear delineation between product lines. And so when you look at like the G5 plus is a baller sort of entry to mid ranger phone. And now we've got X's and new Z's and Z plays. And I, I would like to see a little bit more brand synergy, or at least can we maybe next year agree that all Moto phones will be Moto mod compatible and then it won't matter as much which tier of product I'm buying into. I, I don't know. I, I just feel like for a company that helped set the standard on entry level and mid-ranger fare, they could be doing a little bit more to help consumers sort of figure out where their dollars should be spent. Uh, Sam, any thoughts? Not really. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a big user of the Motorola line of phones, so I haven't really even been paying attention. However, this is, I, I just noticed something they specified, or Evan Blass is saying, or whatever this article, I'm sorry, a GSM Arena article you posted, is saying something called Shatter Shield Display. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, that's not, they're not using Gorilla Glass on this. 
Oh no, that's been a since what was it? It was one of the Verizon Motorola. Uh, yeah, the, the droid, the last droid, the last. One. Yeah, it's, it's uh, this. Yeah. It's this impact and vibration resistant screen oh. tech, and it can sometimes wash out color a little bit, but it's it's pretty epic for uh, helping to improve durability. I think the the Z Force used Shatter Shield. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely. All right, moving on. Um, Samsung is looks like they're going to make lots of money. Uh, Record-breaking <laughs> profits in 2017. Um, it's estimating that operating profits of 14 trillion Korean won, or 12 point, uh, 12 point, uh, 1, 1 billion US dollars, um, is what they're going to be making this year, which is great. It looks like the S8 has been selling well, and with the note coming out, that'll of course boost profits. So I'm sure we can skip that. You know, we all know Samsung makes money, yeah, unless you guys want to throw anything in there. Galaxy Note 8. No, no, they, they make money. Okay. Uh, we yeah, talked about I, I, I'm, I'm shocked that they, sorry, the only thing I wanted to add was I'm shocked that they were able to weather the Note 7 as well. I mean, I know that some of these sales expectations are still low because of the Note being absent from the market, but it seems like the S8 has made up that backlog of people who wanted a new phone. Yeah, but actually, I'm not. That's a funny thing. I think I, I had this conversation with someone. And I wasn't even that shocked about the fact that they would recover from the from the um, the Note Seven because everyone was talking about the Note Seven. Even people who really didn't use Android was talking about the Note Seven, and it wasn't altogether positive because we all know what the issue is. <laughs> it was mostly uh, not. Yeah, positive, but right. but the funny thing is, everyone started paying attention to Samsung. If there was, if you could say any any um, any publicity is good publicity, this is the biggest kind of good publicity that Samsung had. It was actually pretty good. All right, cool. Um, we talked about this earlier. Uh, Zeist is coming back to Nokia, which should be a big boost for the new Nokia brand, uh, which is run by HMD, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. So it looks like future phones will have a Kai, Kai Zeist lens and some of that, which can always help. There's really no wrong way of putting that in there so yeah. <laughs> uh that's that and then our final topic um it looks like alibaba is coming out with its own ai built uh, speaker this was posted by mr juan bagnell on pocket now no it wasn't. i did not post this story <laughs> look every story on pocket now is posted by you man <laughs> <laughs> um it's that's gonna be priced at 499 uh juan, not, not juan sorry how do you pronounce the chinese currency korean one no, 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 Chinese, Chinese. Oh, isn't it Yuan? It's, it's, yeah, it's still Yuan. Yuan. But it's still Yuan. Yuan. It's pronounced mostly like Yuan, but Yuan. I, yeah. I was like, 499 Yuan's? Are they four? Mm -hmm. I, I can't. Dude, are you that rich? Yeah, well, and also, I mean, like, it's also I'm, I'm, I'm the original, man. You know, I'm the one and only, so. So, so if rough. we take you around, uh, we can get right. it. If you right? need to find 500 more of me, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so it's, uh, it reaches $74. Um, and uh, it's the attempt to have their own um, portable um, home connected speaker, which makes sense since I think I don't think Google Home or Amazon are available in China at this point. So, no, I mean no Google services are. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I mean the thing is, it's like it's it's the right product for the market. It's just uh, I, I kind of feel, man, like. So many players are coming out with internet connected speakers with some sort of intelligence built into them that we're kind of quickly reaching. This is just sort of the next Bluetooth earpiece or smartwatch mm -hmm. fad. Because who else is making one too? Microsoft um, has one coming out as well. Microsoft has one coming out, and then someone else that kind of caught me by surprise, and now I can't remember who. Dang it. Oh, uh, Samsung. Samsung's working Samsung, on a Bixby. Yeah, Bixby one. Of course, yeah. You know. And like, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not. I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm starting to really not care about speakers because, again, it, it, it's really all about what ecosystem you can tie into. The only company I would care about making a speaker right now would be IBM. Yeah. But no, but you know the funny well, thing? I'm actually more interested in Alibaba making a product like this than I, I would be in IBM or Samsung or anyone else because this is their equivalent of an Amazon. So oh, this no, is, I, I don't disagree this... with that. It's just I can't. I mean, like, I can be interested in it from sort of an academic standpoint, but, you know, I've got a Chinese Oppo R11 that I can't do anything with. Oh, yeah, you know, exactly. Like <laughs> and and this, this, is, this is, so this is the funny thing, right? This isn't for you. This isn't for me. This isn't for you. It's e. totally this, not for me. This is for the Chinese market. This uses mostly the Chinese language, and it's not going to, I don't think it's going to proliferate over to the West. This is not coming to us. 
This yeah. is a big move because what this says is that Alibaba has realized that the way that Amazon continues to push its product out to its consumers using Echo or using Alexa is a big deal. And they want to tap into that market for China. They're that, closing that, I... that off from Amazon. So to me, that's a really big deal because we now see that these, I would say, uh, marketplaces, T-Malls, now have an idea of how to interact with their customers in a totally new way. And we didn't have this before um, until we started getting the Alexas of the world and the connected speakers. It's less about the speaker. It is more about selling directly to their consumers or giving their consumers a better interface to purchase them from their um, their own merchandise. Oh, man, it definitely store. is true. And it's also with, like uh, Juan said earlier, ecosystem. I mean, as much as, you know, I kind of bemoaned here in Samsung having a um, the Bixby speaker, the one thing they do have, which I'm surprised they have not pushed on the S8, is the Samsung Connect app, which whenever you go on Wi-Fi, it pops up. And I just got the new vacuum. I already, as soon as I looked, it just shows you every Samsung product you can connect. Yeah. You don't have to download an, an extra app. You just connect it there, use it. And I'm like, Samsung, this should be your next selling point. If you want to yeah. tie Bixby with that, sure, go ahead. But you know, you have an ecosystem of products. You have TVs, you have vacuums, you have fridges, uh, washing machines, all this kind of stuff. So on the ecosystem side of things, I see that. Um, and this is where, just going back to our first topic, Microsoft, you screwed yourself over again. Hardware, yeah. baby, hardware. And you don't have that basis for it. So on that note, I'll leave you guys with the sadness of saying Microsoft is failing. <laughs> I don't think they I, are. But know, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think this, this is a sentiment that we've all sort of been arriving at that this is why you need a company. I was so excited about the reorganization, thinking that their internal departments were going to start synergizing and working better together. Yeah. And that ultimately hasn't proven to be the strategy that they're looking to employ. I mean, when the they miss the boat on consumer inter interactions with digital assistants, when they had the Xbox Connect and Cortana at the ready, they only have themselves to blame because that's also all like uh -huh. Nadella's supposed expertise is the server side, the infrastructure, the ecosystem. Like that should have been a no brainer. Uh -huh. Definitely. That's definitely, I mean, look, even, even, you know, you're right. Even with the Xbox one X, that was a nice way to relaunch Cortana. Uh -huh. That's a nice way to say, Hey, you know what? Xbox one X, here's one part we didn't show you about the operating system, fully voice controlled, Fully Cortana with, with what interface now? I know with what I know. hardware interface. Thank I, you. I was dreaming. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. We've got to the end well, of the show. Well, one, 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 one thing since again. we're talking about since we're talking about Samsung, one thing is if you have a Samsung uh, TV right now and you use Steam for gaming, please go out to Samsung. If, it, if this is the 2016 and 2017 line, lines of TV, please go out to Samsung and see if you can actually download the uh, the Steam link, and that should be able to give you access to your Steam game. Games on a Samsung TV without the serious hardware. Yeah, I actually downloaded them on my on, on, on my Samsung, oh, but it's not quite working right now. So oh, come on, you guys I go out there. And see. It's, it's, it's beta, so I'm saying if you guys are interested, go out there. I think it's something really cool, and you guys should actually check it out. Oh, I'm gonna harass Samsung, man, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> now that I can have Steam games on there, that is great, huh? fantastic. Anyway, we're going to the point of the show where we tell you what we have on the channels and what you can expect next week. So, Mr. Juan Bagnell, what can we expect from you, and what do you have? Pocket now as well as some gadget guy and vidme so pocket now we've got a bunch of phone comparisons up we finally got around to giving the u11 a little bit more love it just kind of got caught up in a slate of uh other phone releases so we had to make up for some lost time there but probably the most exciting thing on the channel is uh the pocket now weekly the pn weekly's uh five year anniversary was this week so for the five year anniversary show, we brought back uh, Brandon Miniman, who's now over at XDA and Mr. Mobile himself, Michael Fisher and uh, our editor in chief, Tony. Uh, we all had a, a sort of a fun reminisce on this week's podcast. It's maybe one of the best episodes we've put together in recent memory. So uh, if you guys are sort of interested in continuing the podcast dialogue, we'd uh, we'd humbly recommend you check out that episode. Um, some gadget guy, I'm still catching up on some stuff from traveling, so I will be getting some new videos out soon about travel tech, how to prep yourself for 
Um, I know it's going to be a little less revel relevant in the middle of the summer as people are probably already working on their vacation plans, but it's still stuff that I want to get out. And to wrap everything up, uh, we did recover yet another episode of Movies You May Have Missed. So this week we posted a review that we shot on a Belgian mockumentary about serial killers from back in the day. And it was a really okay. fun film to review. So uh, you should go check that out over on uh, my VidMe channel so you can see all of the fun movie shenanigans too. Cool. Well, on our end, um, last week we had our Sonos Playbase review. Uh, definitely check it out. If you don't want to get the Sonos soundbar, definitely pick up the Playbase. Same, Sonos knows how to make this stuff, and uh, it it sounds actually sounds maybe slightly better than the soundbar. It's really good, uh, really good stuff. Uh, we had two monitor reviews up last week, uh, one for the Acer Predator Z35P, which is a 120 hertz uh, monitor, and uh, one from a company called Pixio. This is their second monitor, really nice. It's 1080p, does 144 hertz, uh, AMD FreeSync, also cost effective. And speaking of cost effective, we did our Ryzen build. It was a $550 1080p Ryzen build. I know some of you complained that some of the games didn't go up to uh, go past 60 frames per second and when you're doing budget bills man that's what happens <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but check it out that's a nice basis for you to start a cheap build and then move up from there um i might revise that build when the ryzen 3 comes out because then you can drop your processor price and still get some really you know good performance off that um and in terms of what you we can expect next on the channel i will first say enter into our giveaway we've got a giveaway where we're giving away a 55 inch um 4k tv with a hd antenna courtesy of tcl to help you cut the cord because it's got built-in roku antenna you don't have to actually pay for cable anymore which is pretty cool. So enter to that, links down in the description. Uh, and we have a couple of, um, we have a couple of videos coming up next week. One is the braggy headphones from Sam. Um, that should be finalized this weekend, should come up. And today we will have uh, our Moto Z2 play, I think that's what's out right now. One of them. I know uh, Daniel Daniel was handling that review, so that should be up today. And then next week, we've got a couple of more sound bars and uh, a few other gaming things uh, to showcase on the channel. I just, there's just a lot of stuff coming in. But want to thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, definitely appreciate that. Uh, it's a fun show. We've been away for a while. That's why it's kind of run a little longer. And that, you know, that little argument about Red, you know, I, I don't hate Sam, I don't hate Red. You know, I just don't he like a lot of IT doesn't like new stuff. I don't like mumbo jumbo to speak. <laughs> He's man. getting kind of up there in age, you know. It's yeah, you know, getting really old there. You know what? That's the end. That's the end. Scary. That, that's just <laughs> don't you add milk into my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, definitely check out all the channels. Uh, check out Mr. Juan Bagnell. He is part of the Pocket Dow crew, so you can follow him there and check out his videos as well as his personal channel on YouTube. It is um, Juan Bagnell actually on YouTube. You can find oh, yeah, but if you search for some gadget guy, you'll find me all over the internet. Yeah. That's pretty much the easiest way to find yeah. Me. So some gadget guy you'll find him everywhere, as well as also on VidMe to where you find him as Juan back now on VidMe. He has infected the internet. There we go. And then um Mr. Uh Sam, aka Black Iron underscore man, is part of the Border Work Network. His Twitter handle is Black Iron underscore man. And stay tuned for his latest video. It is so sexy, man. It's, it, I mean, it, it's like the best thing he's ever done in years, I think. Um, and uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it's, 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 it should be interesting. And uh, on my end, it's Border Work, um, you know, all over the internet. You search Border Work, you'll find us on Twitter, YouTube, as well as the channel. So thank you very much. When you subscribe to the channels, also hit the notification icon so you get notified with our latest videos, guys. I have to remind people because that's how YouTube works. So this is Thunder You saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment. <laughs>